Welcome to the shooting show. This week, Chris Dalton delivers a Grelikin masterclass after getting a roebuck on the ground. Plus, we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. By popular demand from the YouTube comments section, Chris has promised to get us a full step-by-step -step Grelic on camera. But there's one crucial element missing, a deer carcass to demonstrate on. With a suitable book in mind, Chris heads out on an early morning mission. As luck would have it, this is one of those stalks when everything goes right. Stalking the forestry edge, we come across the target buck just as the light comes up. We've got a robot just down below us in the lollipop. Nice robot actually. One thing that I'll be looking for in assessment is the approach. So, you know, check the rifles are reloaded, safety catches on. I'm downwind, the wind's just coming down the valley. Dog's keen to go and recover this anyway. Um, so you've got to be prepared to take a second shot should the deer get up, spinal crease or anything like that. So I've checked it with the glasses and there's absolutely no sign of movement. So I'm just going to approach it. I've got a safe backstop and I can take a second killing shot if need be. If that animal was alive now and still moving then I'd set the rifle up on the sticks and I'd shoot from here just to make sure that it's absolutely dead prolonged you know to, to prevent any further suffering. Once I've got into there I'll just check it's dead by touching the eyes with the sticks just for a blink reaction and provided I've got no blink reaction then we'll go into the next start uh, stage of the level two process. That's the hard part done. Now for the long-awaited Gralic. Good lad. We've brought the deer now to a place where I'm going to grolic it, suspended grolic. First thing for safety, so what I'm going to be looking for is the candidate unloads the rifle, so safe direction. Just catch that round. I'm sure that's clear. I'll leave the bolt open. Everybody knows then that the rifle's safe and we put that to one side. Nice six pointer bit of weight to that. Entry wound, low neck, no obvious signs of anything on this animal, it's clearly healthy. Very little tick, I can't see any ticks at all hardly. Just checking lumps and bumps, any breaks. I mean we've clearly got a roebuck in prime condition so what we'll do now is we'll do a suspended grelic on him and a lot of people have asked me to demonstrate this in a bit more detail so that's what we're going to do this morning we've got time to do it unfortunately the midges are not too bad i carry as little as possible i find this apex predator from napier the ideal bit of kit because everything's in here that i need so we've got the disposable grelic in gloves which is essential now really to prevent any contamination cross contamination between deer and us and vice versa if you're doing one of the larger animals a red or a fallow um, you can actually wear a sleeve which goes over the top of that and then covers the rest of the jacket but to be honest the way i'm going to deal with this one now with the suspended gralic all, all i need is that a couple of, of s hooks uh, i use my bag just as a hygienic sort of spot to put my equipment and we're going to use this branch here to suspend it i've got a my grelicking knife and my bone saw and basically that is my 
equipment for the task. There's the main joint and there's a secondary joint just below it which you can feel with your thumb. If you put your knife on that and basically cut around the fur, you're onto the flat joint and then the flat joint just breaks off, dislocate if you like and then just cut that off and free that off. Okay, I'll put them down and then I'll hock it which is obviously where I'm going to hang it up. So I'll do the other one from the other side. You can see there's the main knuckle, there's the secondary. Very carefully cut just around the fur, not cutting bone and then dislocate quite easy. You hear it's a nice satisfying crack when you get it in the right place. And there we've got bleeding out the exit. There's quite a lot already gone. First part of the grolicking process really is to bleed. And this is important because it starts the cooling process of the deer, which, which, I, which prevents the, um, the spread of bacteria. So bacteria grows best at body temperature. So the sooner we can start to cool the animal, the sooner that we reduce that potential spread of, of, of damaging or harmful bacteria. So that is really why we're actually bleeding the animal, it improves the quality of the venison, etc. Animal hung up now, so the next process to say we've already, it's quite a lot of blood come out of the exit wound, but we'll finish that, that, that bleed, bleed process off. At the throat, we just basically want the knife in deep and high, jiggle it round a bit into the chest cavity, and again, there's not much. Had that deer not bled out from the exit wound, the blood that came out of there would now be coming from the chest cavity. Basically the animal is draining down into the chest cavity, that's why suspended grelk is actually quite good for this, it makes, it makes life a lot easier. So once you open that area up then that blood will drain out. If need be you can sort of squeeze and manipulate a little bit, but to be honest with a suspended grelk you won't really need that. The easiest thing to do now is actually to take off, whether it's male or female it doesn't matter. In this case we're going to take the penis, penis off, so basically grasp, it doesn't need this anymore now anyway, grasp the penis up and basically nick underneath it till you see the the skin underneath and what I'm going to do is a bit of upward pressure and just free that off all the way back up just nick it there and I'm going to take the tube right the way back out of the way put down deep into that and you will then expose the pelvic bone there. Right, so what I'm going to do now is protect the point of the knife from going through the stomach with my fingers. So my fingers are in front of the knife as I come down through the carcass and what I want to do is find the top of the breastbone which is there or thereabouts and I'm holding the stomach contents in with my left hand and just take it right down to the bleed hole. I'm cutting outwards, so I'm cutting from the skin flesh out that way. So I'm actually not contaminating uh, the, or getting sort of bits of fur within the, the meat area. I can now let go of the, effectively the gralic and let that kind of drop forward. It won't come out because it's been held in by the connective tissue, but, but effectively now, we can start a little bit of our examination process. But what we can see here now is we've got the spleen, uh, so we can have a look at that because that's one of the main organs of the level two assessment. And what we're looking for is a nice plum colour, um, smaller than the liver, attached there to the, to the stomach wall. Um, basically, if that was enlarged, uh, grossly distended, that would be an anthrax indicator, which is one of the notifiable diseases. So that's what you would need to be telling me on a level two assessment. And what we can also see in here is the kidneys. Um, not much fat around the kidneys, but I wouldn't expect that at this time of year. It's just come out of strenuous rutting. So it's had three weeks of rutting activity. They've not eaten much. Um, so they very quickly lose that fat. One of the things you will look at in the kidneys is just to see if they're swollen uh, in any way, because that would be perhaps an indication of a water retention disease. Um, but clearly there's nothing wrong with that. And that's uh, Oscar's, what he's waiting for. It's a problem area for a lot of people, the anus of a deer and how to get it out. Now, there's several ways you can do it. I'm not saying this is the only way. Um, as long as a gralic is hygienic and clean, then it's fine. I think you'll probably find, having seen this, this is possibly one of the easiest ways. And what I do is I'll actually cut the pelvic bone. It's quite a, be quite a hard bone on this deer, so it'll take a bit of getting through. 
but um, so we're doing a little bit careful and there we've gone through okay so that's actually the bone saw work finished with I can get my finger around the back just freeing everything off if need be a little bit of assistance just on the edges there and there okay and the back side is now coming up and now it's a simple matter of a v-cut just down take the anus off and notice <clears throat> there's no contamination coming down into the carcass okay i'm going to lift that forward and it can pee away happily now because that's all going down there it's very simple now you've got the diaphragm skirt there so all i need to do is cut the diaphragm very close to the body being careful not to nick anything and basically i'm putting my finger underneath to see where that comes through so i'm putting my finger next to the and then just cutting up to free that off so that's one side now completely free okay i'm going to do the same at the other side finger through there the only thing holding that gra that gra garlic in now and all the organs is basically connective tissue here so it's very simply just ease into that be careful because you've got a saddle fillet there a true fillet sorry and there we go that deer has now garlic itself so I'm just going to put the knife down and just chase the windpipe really down into the throat like that Again, people struggle. This is another pit people struggle with, and there's no real need to do it. It's quite straightforward. Um, the cut now goes close to the back of the ears as you can. So take a line right up the back of the ears and basically cut down deep into the neck. And what you're looking for is the atlas joint, which is there. Either side of the atlas joint is like a flanged joint, which is there. Now you can't cut through that, but you can just slowly prise with the point of your knife on either side and that's how you take the head off. To make it easier, I'm actually going to free off a V-cut down the head. So basically that's the head off. We've got some food, uh, obviously food contamination there from, from working this out. Not worried about that, that's all going down there. I'll clean the knife off before we proceed. If you bend the leg back on itself, and bring the knife down the line of that leg there and keep that angle that actually puts the knife straight onto the flat joint again same thing just free the fur off and then just dislocate it on itself and then you can take the leg off and that carcass is cooling down all the time any blood is draining down um, you know so that is perfect if it was a really warm July or August morning like it perhaps should be you may have to consider taking all this back to the larder to do your examination in the larder in a vermin proof environment because I don't want that hanging up if there's flies around. Um, so if that was the case we would, we would put that straight into the row sack, we would go back to the larder, we would take this back to the larder with us and do the examination back there. We've got a cool morning here this morning so we can do it out here. That's not hurting, that's cooling so we can leave that quite happily. The other thing you've got to consider is you have got a hygienic way of transporting your deer out of the field. If you're actually going to drag your deer, there's no way that you can grow it to that level. There's too much contamination. And basically, we have, uh, well, I, I love these Apex row sacks, which means I can, um, I can put the deer into a clean, washable tray, uh, uh, liner, completely enclose the carcass, pull the drawstring, Everything goes back with me, then can carry back to the back to the, the vehicle without any contamination whatsoever. So again, that deer is going straight in the larder when we get back home. Job done. Chris Dalton handling the knives like Sweeney Todd there. And now, the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. 
Lead ammunition is here to stay, worldwide. The IUCN has voted on a motion for a potential lead ban at its World Congress, but thanks to the work of shooting organisations, the wording of the motion was significantly weakened before it came to the vote. IUCN members voted in favour of a reworded motion that encourages governments to phase out where feasible lead shot used for hunting over wetlands. If you're into shotgun shooting, don't miss I Shoot magazine every month. The government wants to hear your views about grouse shooting. After an anti-shooting petition passed 100,000 signatures, the government wants to hear evidence on the subject before MPs debate it. It's vital that shooters give their views on the benefits of grouse shooting, but be quick, the inquiry only runs until the 5th of October. Head to the address on screen to contribute. The Paralympics are all over, with no shooting medals for Great Britain. Matt Skelhorn's performance in prone rifle was the highlight. He set a new Paralympic record, qualifying for the final in first place. But with the scores reset for the final, he couldn't keep his form going and exited in seventh. Stuart Nangle and Lorraine Lambert also reached their respective finals. Shooting organisations have panned the RSPB's latest State of Nature report. The NGO says the good work of gamekeepers receives scant attention in the report, even though it states well-planned conservation projects are crucial for the fortunes of wildlife. A spokesperson said the report was a lost opportunity to bring all parties together in a common cause to help struggling nature. And finally, Heather burning's good for biodiversity. It's official. A study published in the New Journal of Botany found that the species numbers fell up to 35% when there was an absence of heather burning on lower level sites. The study covered an impressive 44 years of conservation efforts. Basque's Peter Glenzer said it adds more evidence to the weight of knowledge relating to the benefits of heather burn. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show.